Hey guys, how's it going? This is Zero to Infinity here, recording game two of Silar's Wrath versus, uh, I believe this was Team B. Uh, so, I'm just going to take over replay. I do apologize about the uh, late upload. We've been having some issues with uh, getting our casting programs up, so uh, we're just basically going to re-record this game, just kind of talk about what's been going on. So, to start off, we have uh, some first bands coming out. Now, we're seeing Undying being banned again. Uh, once again, I do want to emphasize, it seems like Undying is extremely strong in this patch due to his tombstone. And it's just he's such a tanky, tanky support. It's really great for cow control. But we're also seeing a ban from Gyrocopter as well. So, it seems like uh, Gyrocopter has also been being picked up a lot during the international playoffs. I'm assuming it's just that... Uh, I'm not sure what patches he may have gone through, but I know that he's relatively a great pick in terms of just great farming and also really good for team fights. And now we're seeing Korean Pain being banned as well. Uh, a lot of burst damage. So I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what's happening in this game because these teams, uh, once again, have never played each other. So this is the second game that they're playing. So I, I think they're just trying to get rid of heroes that they, they're seeing that might be uh, the weaknesses. But it's hard to find out what strategy might be until we start seeing what picks are going to come through right here. So Silar's Wrath, um, the the last game that they played there was it was an excellent turnaround. It was fairly even, um, eighteen eighteen until uh, we saw the Viper actually pick up a mech and a Black King Bar, and from there it just sort of snowball for them. So from here we actually see that a Jakiro is being picked up here. Uh, Jakiro as a support is just excellent with their uh, ability to do the Ice Path. It actually stuns multiple enemies at once. But also for the fact that he gets a free AoE spell, it's really excellent for harassing uh, because it also adds a additional slow for uh, carry's attack and also does uh, nice burn damage over time. Uh, and then we're seeing a line being picked a gun. Uh, guys, I, I really like line just because he gets a free, essentially, a uh, sheep stick. And if you're a very skilled player, you can essentially stack the hex with the sp earth spike so you can actually get a fairly long stun duration out of it. It's something that me and uh, Happy were talking about from the last video here. Um, so I actually want to look this up real fast. I want to see what Gyrocopter got in 6.84. That was so... Uh, Cause them to be banned quite often, or actually being picked up quite often. So let's see here. Looks like Gyrocopter actually got a buff, I think. Yeah, Rock Barrage no longer has a cast point. Previously, it was a 0 .3, uh, 0 0.3 seconds, and then the call down missile two slow duration did get nerfed slightly by one second. But overall, the Rock Barrage having no cast point is really nice if you ever need to go chase down a hero and just uh, finish them off as quick as possible. We are seeing a Shadow Demon being picked up here. One thing I really like about Shadow Demon in 6.84 is his Ag Scepter upgrade. Um, Ag Scepter is actually um, applies break, so it disables passive abilities. And if you guys remember, uh, he also got Aghanim Scepter the last game, uh, last patch, where it actually gives him the ability to cast his Demonic Purge up to three times. Um, Juggernaut that we're seeing here, obviously, is going to be the carry for, uh, for Team B. And I'm kind of uh, usually when I see Captain's Ball being picked, I usually see a carry being picked last, just so that way the other team has less of a chance to counter it. So I'm wondering what their strategy is in terms of picking a Juggernaut out so early. Um, obviously if you have a Juggernaut that does a lot of physical damage, you're going to want to use an Omni Knight to counter so that way your entire team has a lot of immunity to them. Or perhaps some type of a, I don't say semi-stun, I would say uh, some type of way to get yourself into ethereal form because his ultimate is a physical damage so even Pugna can actually cast himself into his uh, uh, Banish I think it's what's called it puts him into an ethereal form so that way he can't get hit or you could even use uh, Sand, Sand King and actually just start casting sand, uh, Sandstorm and that will actually completely negate the effect of Omni Slash which is actually a really effective counter so again I'm not sure why the Juggernaut was picked up so early perhaps they were afraid that the other team was going to pick them but nevertheless, that's been picked up also with an Ogre Magi. We are seeing a lot of stuns here. Again, guys, I mentioned before that uh, if you are playing pub games, it's just great to have chain stuns over and over and over again. That's really going to help you raise your MMR. Just a lot of teams aren't ready to do that many stuns either. Um, so far from Silar's Wrath, though, we still have not seen a carry. We're seeing two... Uh, so 
we're actually seeing three supports here, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing based on this, we're probably going to see the Shadow Shaman play a 5 roll, with the Shadow Demon and Jakiro playing a 4-3 roll. Um, Shadow Shaman himself, he doesn't do a whole lot of damage uh, on his own. The main reason why you're going to see people pick Shadow Shaman is also, like Lion, for his free sheet stick, but also his ultimate just does so much damage in terms of just pushing towers. So that's really, really nice. Um, we are seeing that Viper is being banned for the uh, Silas Wrath team. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think what could happen, maybe because they're not seeing a lot of stuns. I, I'm not sure. Uh, well, t t Viper's pretty takey, but I'm, try I'm trying to f see what exactly their strategy is right now. Like, because uh, usually when you're doing captain's mode, I mean, aside from just um, counterpicking and banning other uh, team's heroes, you also want to make sure your team has a fairly solid strategy that synergizes very well with itself. So, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking what's going to happen is we're going to see Shadow Shaman do a shackle. Jakiro's going to cast his... Uh, macro pyre and then immediately cast his ice path to stun them so that way it really holds the person in that spot for as long as possible to soak up all that damage or even in worst case scenario shadow demon can actually even cause a disruption and then get plenty of time for Jakira to lay down his macro pyre so these three supports are going to fairly work really well with each other with their spells to help them really chain their hits and we see a venomancer so it looks like silas Rev's actually going for a push strategy here Jakira is a very very strong pusher just for the fact that this liquid fire actually does AoE damage and then Shadow Demon has the ability to actually cast his Soul Catcher and catch multiple way creeps um, at once and then do a Shadow Poison to basically just uh, kill everything at once. Uh, Shadow Shaman obviously using his Massacre Ward and then Venomancer using Plague Ward over and over and over again just to push those towers. So we're seeing a very very early uh, push strat is what I'm seeing is uh, what Silent Strat seems to be focused on. Um, Whereas it looks like uh, Team B is actually going for a very strong uh, team fight approach. Um, obviously, we're going to have the two great stuns from Ogre Magi and Lion. And then the Silencer using this Global Science that basically keeps Juggernaut immune in case he needs to go through and engage. But Juggernaut can also even do a Blade Fairy into uh, an attack and immediately cast his Omni Slash as well. So there's a couple possibilities here. I think with Silas Raptor, probably going to want to avoid team fights if possible. But again, what's going to be really nice is the fact that Venomancer's ulti will work very well with Jakiro's macro pyre because once he casts his ultimate, uh, basically it just counts. We just need to count on the slows and the hexes or stuns to have uh, Jakiro's macro pyre take full. Um, take, make them take full damage as much as possible, and then hopefully the carries will take uh, fatal damage from a tick, maybe uh, from Poison Sting, or some, one of the wards that Metal Master may have. Um, now we are seeing Tide Hunter and Void being banned. Um, you know, I, I, I could see why they might ban Void, because uh, it, again, it's it's going to synergize very well with Shakira's Macro Pyre. I'm not sure Shadow Shaman's... Uh, the Shadow Shaman's Serpent Wards actually go through... Uh, Void's Chronosphere, but we'll see what happens. And we're seeing a Tide Hunter being banned from their side. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how that would work together there. Somebody can explain it to me. Uh, they already have a fairly good team fight going on, unless maybe they have the Tide Hunter go in and engage with his ultimate and allowing the Juggernaut to actually do his Omni Slash, pull off successfully. Um, I'm not sure. But. Uh, we're going to see the, the last picks here and see what happens from Team B. And maybe... So I got three intelligence heroes at Julie Hero. Uh, that's something that some people brought to me before. You never have one at... You never want to have all intelligence heroes or all Julie heroes. You just want to have a nice team uh, composition to make sure that they fare together. Sorry. That they synergize together pretty well. But we're seeing a Dark Seer. Now this is actually a really, really good pick for uh, Team B. With a Dark Seer, Dark Seer could actually cast his uh, I, uh, um, Ion Shell on Juggernaut, as well as his, his speed boost to make Juggernaut chase down enemies much faster. But we're going to see a Bristleback come up. Um, Bristleback, I'm guessing he offers a lot of chase power. But the thing is, with Silencer's Glaives of Wisdom, it does cause pure damage, which can actually, which can actually go through Bristleback's armor, if I'm thinking correctly. So that might be detrimental to our team. So 
Uh, we'll see. This is gonna be this is gonna be an interesting match. I, I have a feeling that Siler's draft is going to go for an early push as quickly as possible. That's really the only way I, I feel that they're gonna win. Um, if they if they let this game get too far in the end game, that Sanser and Juggernaut are really going to carry this game through. Uh, Sanser really scales great into and in, into late game, especially if he can just stick around to get some kills. Obviously, having the ability to steal two t intelligence from uh, any hero within 200 yards is great. Now, we're seeing a very early smoke um, from Team B, and I think they're going to go through top rune and see if they can trap the whichever enemy hero goes through. This is something that's always unique, too. I always see full teams go for one rune um in more in the more higher level games i rarely see teams split up to make sure they capture both rooms here and i'm, I'm assuming it's probably just because getting that first blood is just going to be uh, impacting them a lot more so we're seeing them get, uh, set up for a gank here i think both teams are anticipating everybody to be on the top lane i'm wondering if uh, the other oh actually looks like the smoke just got popped they are engaging uh they're not even waiting for the rune it looks like this battle match is gonna be caught out they might try to focus him down I don't know, be too too far into a tower dive, so unsuccessful gank, but it looks like the tire team is going to capture the bottom route and we're gonna have the radiant team capture the top room. Sansa's gonna grab that uh, extra bounty here, so we're gonna start seeing the lanes play out here. So we're gonna have a juggernaut most likely go bottom for the safe lane. Uh so we see here. Sansa's gonna go mid, uh great area. And then we're seeing a Jakiro off lane with Bristleback and Shadow Shaman and Shadow Demon going uh, defensive tri lane up top. Uh, Dark Seer is a great offlaner, guys. His Ion Shell can actually be cast on a creep wave, which allows him to automatically push away from himself and not putting himself in any danger. And it's a great way to farm. It's going to be very annoying against that Bristleback just for the fact that with a Bristleback, he needs to get within melee range to actually do any damage to creeps. But by allowing the uh, Bristleback to uh, actually not be even be able to get into melee range because of the Ion Shell. It's really going to have the dark, dark Star farm and get to his level 6 as quickly as possible. Uh, interestingly enough, we are actually seeing a surge here. I think he was actually skilling that first only because they were hoping to get early ganker uh, at, uh, during the, sorry, for the top room earlier that we saw, but it's uh, this is going to put him a little bit behind until he hits his level 2 when he can actually get his Ion Shell. And we see a Shadow Demon actually do a great job just harassing the Dark Star out of lane. Well, here on the bottom lane, we also got a defensive tri lane for the Juggernaut, just to get his farm up as quickly as possible. He's already level 2. Um, usually when you see a Juggernaut build nowadays, uh, it's it's not uncommon to actually see a Juggernaut skip one of his skills and put point in stats, just to make sure, sure that he's a little bit tankier, because he is a fairly squishy hero at first, and he doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So, we're going to take a look and see how everything's farming here. Jakiro is going to farm Liquid Ice, sorry, Liquid Fire, and also the Ice Pass soon. Ice Pass is a really great stun. Uh, not only does it um, hold a target in place, but it actually stays uh, stays still uh, for a duration, so if someone walks into it, it's going to do some damage. So it looks like this is going to be an early fight between the uh, Ogre Magi and the Jakiro. Looks like the Ogre Magi is actually trying to harass the Jakiro out of lane. Um, you know, it did a great job, but I don't think he's going to get away here. He's going to be chased down by the lion, the juggernaut. It uh, doesn't look like... Uh, actually, Ogre is actually go back to bottom, maybe help him finish him off. But uh, he's not going to get away. There's the first blood from the lion here with a great stun to prevent that time portal from taking effect. Let's see how everybody else is doing in the middle here. So, uh, uh, Silencer, guys. One of the things I do want to emphasize is that if you're actually... Uh, using Sanser, it's really a good idea to cast the last word first, letting the last word pop, and then casting the Curse of Silence, so that way it makes the enemy hero take as much duration of the Curse of Silence as possible. Especially the Venomancer, since the, all Venomancer needs to cast is a Plague Warch, it's only 20 mana, and it's immediately going to dispel the Curse of Silence. So, if you cast a uh, Curse of Silence against Venomancer, really, you're just wasting your mana there. So, uh... As soon as the Plague Wars are coming down here, you're obviously going to want to make sure you take out the Plague Wars as quickly as possible. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Plague Wars as quickly as possible. It's going to push really hard. So we see an early, early last word there. Again, that's a great, great idea to cast that. Um, last word does need to get to level 4 before it becomes truly effective with Crystal Silent. Because uh, last word doesn't get the full 6 second duration to level 4. And that's how long Crystal Silent lasts for. It looks like we got some action going down here. Jakiro's trying to play fairly safe. Um, the lion is doing a great job just harassing the Jakiro out of lane. So that was actually something I wanted to mention up here earlier, guys. Um, if you are going against an enemy hero, 
and you're doing your best to try to deny them farm, it's actually not a bad idea too to just completely harass them out of range. Because if you go through and deny farm, they are still going to get some type of experience. So by just getting them completely uh, harassed out of range, it's going to prevent them from getting any experience at all, period. So that's going to be the main reason here why this Shakira is going to be hit fairly hard. Let's take a look and see what everybody's last hits are currently at. Uh, give me a second here. So it looks like the Juggernaut is farming fairly well with the Vandal Master uh, 4 creep scores behind him. Let's see what's coming out here. Alright, so we see an early bounty room coming for the Jakiro here. He's probably going to want to convert this into a no talisman as soon as possible, just to give him some stats and a little bit of more mana. And it looks like the Starks is going to be chased down, uh, Shadow Demon casting the Banish there. And he's going to cause, get the Surge to run away as quickly as possible. So again, we see Ion Shell coming to play really quickly here. Uh, it's going to make it, again, very difficult for Bristleback to harass if he keeps that Ion Shell on multiple creep waves at the same time. We are seeing a Soul Ring recipe um, on Darkseer. This is going to help him with some of his mana issues. Uh, the, nice, the reason why you're going to want to pick up a recipe uh, first, guys, is because a recipe you have to buy directly from your home base. You can't buy it from the side shop. Um, whereas the components for the Soaring Recipe can actually be at, bought at the side shop. So it just makes it a little bit more efficient. Let's your middle lane actually use a courier a lot easier as well. So that way it benefits them rather than you and doesn't put them too far behind. Radiant we do see the Shadow Demon roam back and forth here. I think he's trying to go for a gank with Darkster or just trying to keep him out of lane. Same thing that's happening with this... Uh, Bottom lane for Dyer as well. Jakiro is being harassed. Uh, let's take a look and see what everybody is at here. So we got Bristol back almost at a level 6 where he gets his Warpath. Uh, Juggernaut about to get his Omni Radiant Slash. And then Silencer getting his uh, Global Silence already. Um, at this point, this is good. the thing about this Venomancer is going to make it extremely difficult for the Silencer to move into a different lane to help support their team because this Venomancer is going to take advantage any time this Silencer disappears to try to push this middle lane as quickly as possible, get the tower down, and get team gold for them. So right now we're still uh, six minutes in. We only uh, see one kill down so far. We see uh, the Radiant side pinging for the uh, two-minute rune. Ogre Magi is going to pick that up. we got an Illusion rune coming up as well for Darkseer. So, looks like the Vindelmaster is not going to get that rune. Uh, that was a great, great pickup. It's nice, if you can, to uh, steal a rune from the mid, uh, enemy mid, as much as you can. So that way, it kind of keeps them in check. Uh, especially, it's very common for mid players to pick up a bottle. As you can see, the Vindelmaster has a bottle, as well as the Silencer. Uh, runes obviously going to regenerate your bottle as well, which is another reason why you want to contest the runes as quickly and as early as possible. Or, in some cases, I don't see players do this enough, but it's always a great idea to gank at the runes um, every two minutes, because you're going to expect the enemy hero to go there regardless, uh, especially if you're on the higher uh, end games. Um, see Jakiro teleporting back. I think he would realize that he might have been being ganked by the Lion and the Juggernaut, so just to play it safe, he's going to back up there. Still level 5. Uh, let's see where everybody's at right now. So it looks like uh, the Radiant side is... Actually, yeah, it looks like Radiant's just a little bit behind uh, the Dire side. Uh, this, again, this Venom Master is going to farm incredibly well just because of his Plague Wars. It's going to allow him to push him over and over and over again. Having a bottle is just really nice. Venom Master's biggest spell that costs him a ton of mana are going to be his ulti and his Venomous Scale. And it's very common just to only put one point in uh, Venomous Scale because Venomous Scale only lasts um, for, I believe, three seconds. Am I wrong? No, it's a 50% slow. Yeah, it's a three seconds slow, so regardless of what level it is, it's going to stay the same, so that's not going to change anything. We see Juggernaut trying to go in for the, uh, for a Jakiro right there, it causes a great macro pyre, and then uh, Shadow Demon is going to come in and actually save that Jakiro, so that was a nice save. Uh, doesn't look like the Jakiro is going to get away, and so Lime brings him down. At least they do get a kill out of that. So that was actually a great play by Jakiro to actually take out the Juggernaut. I think he should have went uh, actually went back after that fight instead of staying still because he just lost his life to a lion. But uh, Shadow Demon was able to bring the lion down. So actually not too bad of a fight there. Uh, Jakiro reacted really well. Actually, I'm going to give props to Shadow Demon for showing up so early because I think the, the Jakiro would have died a lot sooner had the Shadow Demon not popped up and actually banished him. So again, this silencer is not going to be able to do much against this uh, 
Venomancer here. Uh, once again, because like I mentioned here, the biggest spell that uh, Venomancer has that costs a ton of mana is his Venomous Gale. Um, the reason why you only put one level in it is because of it's uh, regardless of which level you're in, it only does a three second slow. And after that, it just does more damage. So oftentimes, it's just better to scale your vent Plague Wards and then your Poison Sting next. That way, your Plague Wards get that passive ability. So this mid tower is going to be pushed pretty hard. It's going to be very difficult for this Venomancer to even chase the sorry, the Sanctuary to chase the Venomancer down just because his Plague Wards are going to back him up. And we can see him, uh, Venomancer, actually casting a Plague Wars to chase him and keep him out of the lane. Let's take a look at our bottom lane soon here. Juggernaut and Venomancer are actually fairly tied here. So it's, this is actually bad news, more bad news for uh, the Dire side than it is for the Radiant side because Juggernaut's going to be your carry that you're going to want to make sure you get to farm as quickly as possible. We are seeing Face Boots and a Ring of Aquila out here. Gives the... Uh, Gives the Juggernaut some fairly decent stats. The reason why you're going to want to pick up uh, Phase Boots as well for Juggernaut over, say, Power Treads is because Phase Boots actually allow him to go through creeps, gives him a lot of chasing power, and as well as attack, uh, which really uh, stacks well with his passive that does additional critical damage. Okay, looks like we got three bot. Uh, the Lion's going to try to come down just to harass him out. This Juggernaut's going to need it back if he doesn't get stunned. We got the Shackles coming from the Shadow Shaman. It looks like they're going to go through a Chain Stun. You know what, that line came in and uh, saved that Juggernaut really there, because I think if Hades saves... Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a quick save. Well, we got Omni Slash, and we're going to see Shadow Shaman and Jakir being brought down by the Juggernaut. Juggernaut's going to cast Space Boots. I don't think it's going to get away because the Venomancer pops up. We have Ogre Magi, Lion coming through to save the Juggernaut here. Juggernaut's going to need to TP, make sure he gets safe. Good save. I was very lucky for the Juggernaut because I think he would have had a lot sooner. It looks like this Lion's going to be brought down by the Venomancer. Not a whole lot we can do there. And then the Ogre Magi is going to be focused down as well. It's Shadow Poison and also the, just the damage over time. That's going to hurt them a lot. Looks like this Venomancer is doing very well. 2 and 0. Let's actually see what the kills are at. So we got four, actually 4 kills from the Lion. 2 deaths. And uh, Juggernaut actually has not gotten a single kill yet. Thinking to miss battle, it's kind of hard to avoid those things, but in many cases, it, I know you do want your uh, carry to get the last hit so that way you can get some farm and gold, but if anything else, if you need to, uh, it's better to kill a hero than let them get away just so that way you were hoping your hero, your uh, your uh, own carry can make this safe play. So see a global science in here, uh, Juggernaut's going to engage, he sees the whole team is not going to get away, Blade Fairy's out, and it looks like the uh, Juggernaut's going to be brought down, uh, this does not look like a favorable team fight for them at all. And we see uh, the Venom Master chasing down the Lion. The Lion's going to go down here. We see a Dark Seer, Dark, Dark Seer Ultimate. They're going to walk right through it. It's going to do a whole lot of damage. He's going to try to get away, but that Venom Master tick damage is just too much. And this Sanctuary is going to be brought down as well. So we almost, we got a Team White going on here. Ogre Magi Sting is still trying to bring down the Venom Master. Venom Master is going to chase him down. The Poison Sting is actually going to slow him down as well. Just not a whole lot of the Ogre Magi can really do here. Venom Master is going to chase him down the Plague Wards. And he goes down. We got the Venom Master 7 and 0 on a rampage. That was really well. Well, got a quick GG. That's strange. That's, that's too bad. That's a. I really think this game could have actually kept going. Uh, I mean, that was a really brutal team fight just at the bottom lane. But I think they could have. Uh, they, I think this game could have actually gone well had the Juggernaut got some more farm. I mean, the late game, it's. Juggernaut's going to out carry. Um, what Bristleback can do. So let's uh, pause this real fast and just take a replay and see what happened here. Obviously, during a lot of T fights going on, I, I completely missed the Bristleback. I think the Bristleback was just uh, sitting up top, just uh, continuously farming, getting his Vanguard. Um, assumedly, probably turned that into a Crimson Guard as soon as possible. But again, we, we saw the pushing power that uh, Silas Wrath was able to bring. Once again, Venomancer, Jakiro, uh, Shadow Shaman. There's just so much pushing power there, but we didn't even have to see the uh, Death Wards coming from Shadow Shaman. I think really that team fight was just extremely discouraging to Team B, so I think that's the reason why there was an each early GG called. Um, but but from what we're playing here, I think it might have been a good idea to have some uh, lane changes. Uh, perhaps what what I would have thought, um, based on the fact that Venomancer was going to be in the middle, it might not have been a bad idea to perhaps play the Lion mid and switch the Sansa up top or bottom, just because the Lion mid could have drained uh, Venomancer of all his mana, making it impossible for him to cast his Plague Wards, and this Lion offers a lot of burst damage, getting him an early level 6 with his 
uh, ultimate as well would have been really effective against Salad Draft, considering that most of the heroes are fairly squishy, uh, aside from the Bristleback. Um, just a little bit of lane rotation, I think, would have benefited them big time. Um, but it looks like Salad Draft is going to take this series of three games uh, two to zero. So once again, I'm going to get this video uploaded for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll get more posted. And follow us up on uh, Crowd Control on Facebook. And check us out on our Twitter stream. Thanks again, guys.